All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Vectorworks Spotlight webinar. It is 11 o'clock. We're on time, so let's jump straight in. My name is Alex, and I am from CAD Software Direct. Some of you may already know us, but for those who don't, we are a Vectorworks reseller based in Essex. We've been working with Vectorworks for many years now, and we're here for pre-sales advice and all the way through to technical support to keep you up and running. I'm joined today by Tom White, Vectorworks Spotlight Product Specialist, who will be going through the main content of this webinar for you today. I will let Tom introduce himself and get started very shortly. But first, just a very quick recap of what you'll learn today. We're looking at approximately 30 to 40 minutes or so where you'll see how to work smarter with the smart options display, customize your workspace with detachable tab palettes, and draw complex shapes easier than ever with the improvements to the modeling tools. You'll also see how to hoist objects. Uh, sorry, you'll see how hoist objects interact directly with rigging points and how the new cable tools will help you design and document your power and data cable looms. Once that's all done, we'll open the floor for some Q&A. You should all see a box on your screen where you can enter questions. So please feel free to type them to us at any time and we'll address those at the end. Finally, this is also being recorded. So if you can't stay to the end or you would like to finish this later or maybe even share it around, it will be available for you to do that. So that's enough from me for now. I'll hand you over to Tom for what's new in Spotlight 2021. Tom, over to you. Thanks very much, Alex. Hi, everybody. Just thought I'd give you a quick wave. Um, good morning, everyone. Thanks very much for that introduction. So uh, I, my name is Tom and I'm the uh, Entertainment Industry Specialist with Vectorworks UK. Um, I've worked in the entertainment industry for the past 15 years as a production electrician, touring uh, chief electrician, relights and an ETC EOS programmer. Um, I worked for six years at the Roundhouse in Camden as a technician on events and concerts as well. So I've done a variety of different things and I now work for Vectorworks um, from various things such as training. So you can book me for training courses um, and things like tech support, et cetera, and demo files, which is hopefully something you see before you now. So I'm just going to share my screen with you all. This is the music concert cube demo file. So I'm just going to check. You can see my screen, Alex. So right. I can see that, yes. Great, thanks very much. Okay, so this is our sort of our main demo file. Um, as Alex mentioned, we've got about 30 or 40 minutes to cover a bunch of stuff. I just thought before we get going, I'll mention a few sort of under the hood and user interface things, which will make your life a lot easier. Um, so first off then, in fact, towards 2021, there's a new feature in the documents preferences, which I'll just mention. And that is your save your VGM graphics cache. And what that means is, as you can see here, we've gone to a 3D view. This is actually a really complex model. Um, there's a couple, there is uh, just over 100 lighting devices and so many plug-in objects, speaker objects, etc. And I think in previous versions of Xbox, this would have been quite slow and sluggish. And what's happened is, is because the VGM cache is checked, it basically means it's cached all of the potential views of those objects. Um, but the first time you go to a 3D isometric view. So that initial 3D view change will be a second or two longer. But once you do that, then the model itself will be incredibly responsive to navigate, which is great. Um, as uh, Alex alluded to earlier, a couple of other user interface things we've changed. Um, these are really helpful for prospects and new customers as well. So for example, if, if you want, if you're used to other 3D softwares, and things like Blender maybe or SketchUp or whatever. You know the command you want and you know what it might be called. And now you can simply type the command into Vectorworks and it will bring up a whole bunch of different options for you to choose here. This is called um, Quick Search. And it can basically be activated by just hitting the letter F for Freddy on your keyboard. And you can type in anything you want. So I, I, I typed in a 3D modeling command a moment ago, but I can also say I want to hoist or I want to draw some truss. So if you're really struggling getting to grips with the literally hundreds of tools at your disposal, then um, this is a really good place to start. Uh, so you can also toggle between the tools themselves or actual menu, menu items as well. 
and that is uh, our new quick search feature. We've also got um, a great feature um, which can be invoked by tapping the space bar and in here you can basically put shortcuts on each of these four quadrants. Uh, for example, the bottom left hand corner displays the history of the tools you most recently used. And up here, you can also actually choose specific palettes to put in here. So it makes the whole user interface extremely customizable. Um, and you can also customize these palettes themselves and create your own custom workspace. Um, so you can actually begin to lose some of these palette windows on the left hand side. And uh, in, in that process, you'll end up with a much more screen real estate for you to work in, which is great. Um, the preferences for those options, um, they can be accessed simply by uh, choosing one of these palette windows. You'll see a small uh, cog on the left-hand side there. You can also access it through the, the main Vectorworks preferences menu. And you can see here, these two new features in the bottom of this list. You've got um, show with spacebar, which is my favorite, but if you use the spacebar a lot to do the temporary panning, then that might be irritating. So you can kind of uh, uncheck that and just give it a mouse idle time, probably a good thing to do. So you can fully customize what things you want displayed and also which of these tool palettes you want to use. So if you spend more time doing rigging, you can customize exactly which ones you want shown up here on each of these quadrants. So it's a really great feature. Okay, so the other thing that's changed as well is the detachable tab palettes, which I find really useful. So, uh, for example, at the moment we're looking at this, and I'm going to be playing back save views during the course of this presentation, just so I can get to quick access, quick parts of the file. I can actually undock the save views tab now. All right, so and I can resize that. And also, if you're the kind of person that likes having your layers accessible rather than having to go through here you can undock the layers which is great so um, these are a bit like photoshop layers the key thing to remember about layers in vectorworks is a layer is where something is so you can see here there's different parts of the light plot there's a cable staging and mojo barrier layer for example so these palettes are now undockable so if you've got external monitors it's really great you can really customize where you want things placed uh, if you change your mind, you can click on the small triangle in the top right hand side and just say dock everything back there again. That's fine. And they will repopulate. Um, this could catch uh, long term users out, but as well as uh, undocking these, you can also change the order of them. So watch out for that because it might catch you out. OK, um, so that's the, the detachable palettes. You can also do the same thing with the object info palette so for example there's a piece of staging here i've got and i might want the shape of it up here and then at the same time there is actually a finish on the render as well so there's a black gloss texture to that which we're not seeing at the moment i'll explain that in a moment so you can also undock these palettes as well which is great um, I'm showing you this model in a black and white uh, render style. It's kind of more of a white card render style. It's basically an OpenGL graphics. And um, these, these items are textured. I just generally like the appearance of this look of a model. We're going to be looking at uh, some of the, the other rendered views a little bit later on. So I'll explain that. In terms of customizing the appearance of this model, I mean, obviously, you've got hundreds of render modes in here anyway that you can choose from. Um, but the OpenGL options is, is more efficient and is good for editing a model. And I like a black and white model because it becomes much easier to see. So you can see here that I've got um, no textures or colors. I'm using anti-aliasing as well. OK, so um, let's have a look at some of the 3D modeling improvements. So the kind of the general idea with Vectorworks really is that um, you can start to do away with with other pieces of software in your arsenal and just kind of move into the sort of single product. Because essentially, I mean, I know lots of customers who are still kind of hanging on to SketchUp um, in, in the background and there's kind of all Blender, for example, but simply because there's things that they can model quickly and efficiently in those software types. But as you can see from what I'm doing now, there's some very similar kind of improvements in terms of like um, the SketchUp modeling workflow and just the ease of use. So in terms of like creating unusual shapes 
it's now really, really simple. And you can do that in Vectorworks. And that's just simply with this instant push pull mode that we have here. So I'm just going to delete this and start again. So um, no more will you need to jump into other software types and, and model them in an external software and then import. I mean, Vectorworks will import literally anything, including um, 3DS and SketchUp files. But you know, you'll be able to do all of that workflow from directly within Vectorworks itself. I'll give you a rough idea how I'm doing that and how I'm able to achieve that. First of all, just to explain that most of things in Vectorworks will draw along the layer plane by default, as you can see. However, um, what we're really interested in is the automatic plane. And the way this works is, is that once you draw an object, automatic plane mode will pick up the plane that you're working on. I mean, this isn't new to 2021, but it's essential that you assign the automatic plane so that you can get, gain access to all of these great features. And um, there's another two small modes now just just have, have become available. So firstly, just to mention, we've got the instant push pull and that just enables you to uh, instantly push pull a 2D shape into a 3D object. And then we've got automatic uh, well, it's like push pull combine mode, but it's basically an automatic add solids, subtract solids. So it used to be in Vectorworks that you would uh, draw a shape over the top of it, push it through, and then you'd have to select both of these shapes, right click on them and subtract solids, and then delete the one that you don't want. And that was just a bit tiresome. So all we do now is, is we enable the combine mode and it automatically detects that if we draw an object and push that shape through the other shape, it's going to subtract. And if we draw something on the face of the object and pull it out, it's going to add it on. And you'll notice here the shape's now changing to a solid addition as well. Uh, the one thing also, it, last year we brought out a thing called history modeling and it basically meant that you could double click an object and you could essentially wade through the object's history. So we could get right down back to when the object was just a kind of 2D shape and edit that shape. And the same applies to 2021, but we have improved this um, slightly. So now you can choose to edit this solid, which is the original object. Um, so you can uh, go right down and say, well, I wanted the original 2D shape actually to be more like this size and then exit extrude and exit those. So you can go to exactly to the moment in time you were editing that shape without having to wade through loads of undo commands to get it to where you want it to be. So that's a really useful function. So all of these 3D objects essentially retain their history and you don't have to wade through all of those items. You can just go directly to whether it's the features, so the subtraction or the addition or the original solid shape, which is great, I think. So that's kind of summarizing the main sort of 3D modeling improvements that we've got to 2021. I'm just going to nip back into my other file for a moment. And uh, some of the the next thing I want to talk to you is some of the, uh, is how we've kind of completed incorporating the GDTF workflow into Vectorworks. Um, so if GDTF has been around for a year or two now, and it's uh, become a recognized industry DIN standard, and people might not not know what it is so just to explain there is it's basically a an industry file format standard which comprises of some data and a 3d model which is normally a mesh object we call it uh, an it's an mvr file type and what essentially what it means is, is it means that people can navigate their way to a website which is just here uh, and then they can log in uh, it was last log me out okay just log in and in this um in this website they'll be able to create their own fixture files so let's just do this one uh, which basically means that you you can create a file uh, just log in here uh, hang on a second There we go. Okay. And you can use this to much how you could create a fixture format on a console. So you can create how the fixture works in terms of its attributes. So it's pan and tilt, fine and coarse, color attributes, and as well as um, 
as well as having attributes, you'll notice that you can also have a 3D model, so a mesh object. Why is that helpful? It basically means that if you're working on a console, you can download the fixture mode to um, a memory stick for now. Um, I think MA are working on uh, a web browser access, so you'll be able to, at the moment, you can download it through Vision as well. So there's a number of softwares that have signed up to this process. Um, the newest uh, software that has recently um, uh, considered joining the program is things like Capture and, well, WYSIWYG and AvoLights. And it's also currently working and in operation by Grand MA and a third party visualization program called Depends. Um, so you'd be able to download fixture modes here and add them to your files. Now, in terms of uh, the 2021 improvements, we've basically now enabled you to import GDTF files directly into the Vectorworks document that you're working on. So you can search for a fixture in here and you can download the fixture itself. So I could just download it. There we go. It's really simple. And then I have my Roby BMFL there. I'm just going to move that tab over there. Now, the next step in the process will be to import that GGTF file. Just to be aware, if, you, if you're a, a current user of Vectorworks and you've customized your workspace in any way, you'll, so you'll need to add that import command or load the default Spotlight workspace. So if we look in our downloads folder, we have our GGTF file. I'm going to click open. Uh, I've done this before. So I'll click OK to replace it. Once you've done this, I'm just going to open the resource manager just to explain to you where they're kept. So if you want to edit the GDTF files within the folder itself. Um, let's say, for example, there's a couple of different modes and options you've got and you want uh, people to not necessarily keep using that particular model. So in here, you can see we've got the geometry as well. So you can um, drag and drop things around these folders here. Now, uh, in terms of assigning the fixture to that fixture mode, Let's see here, we've now got DDTF fixture mode just underneath the vision fixture mode here, and I can choose other. And it should open a little GDTF browser, and it's picked up, I've got a Roby in here, so I'm gonna load to and click OK. Now, all of these things are really important because they populate the DMX footprint of that fixture, which basically enables Vectorworks to patch it. So there's a feature that, we, that came out in 2020 called DMX patch, and in here you can see, I can actually look at the rig by universe by universe. I can see which items aren't currently patched. It also throws up anywhere I've got an overlap. So I can see here at the moment, uh, if I go back to all for a moment and click find next conflict, it will actually take me through the document fault by fault uh, and go to eat everywhere I've got a particular error, which is really, really useful. And it gives me an idea of the last three positions available in each universe. In terms of assigning fixtures, let's just sort of let's fix the universe one problem we've got by just reassigning everything. So this is mostly my Malfoy house lights. So I'm gonna select these. And I'm going to say patch the universe and address universe one, just start from one and click OK. See here, that's now fixed that error. All right, click OK. So this is a really great command, but ultimately you need to make sure that a fixture mode has been assigned um, for that lighting device before you enter any of that patch data, um, any of those address information as well. Okay, now just to explain here, if you're wondering what that fixture mode is, and essentially if a GDTF fixture mode hasn't been populated, this is essentially a vision fixture mode. It will do the same thing. There's a comprehensive library of fixture modes within here, which is great. And it just means that when you send the file to vision, it will send that fixture mode with it. Just to explain that. Okay, so, the next couple of improvements we'll just quickly look at will be the audio improvements, which um, is, a, is a real sort of game changer, I think, for sound designers. Um, I370, okay. So uh, it used to be in Vectorworks previous versions that um, the sort of initial speaker library, if I just change my view, maybe a moment. There was a misconception that the speaker library was fairly small. And I think it was simply because a lot of the speaker symbols were hidden away in other library files. So the speaker tool here, I could choose, for example, um, 
one from this default list. Now you could actually change the items in this list and customize it to your higher stock or whatever speakers you regularly use. But it was uh, quite a bit of work was involved. And so what we've done in 2021 is we've now got access to the resource manager. So you can use the speaker tool and you've now got access to all like hundreds and thousands of all these speakers in these, in these lists down here. Each of these speakers will also have um, dispersion information as well. So you'll be able to see a graphic of what their dispersion will be, um, not based on the specific frequency, but it'll give you a, a, a general ballpark, which is great. Uh, and so you can place specific speakers within the document. Um, the same improvements also apply to the speaker array tool. I'll just take you to one I've already created. So if you're creating a line array, you can also choose a customized bumper or hanging frame. Again, there's the same resource manager shortcut here. You can use this to create your own one as well, which is great. And you'll also see here we're seeing the rigging guides, which is essentially the bits that the motor can attach to. So you can toggle that on and off. Uh, and then you essentially choose each speaker in turn. So you'd set up a speaker A. Uh, again, we'd choose a symbol or you could choose from a catalog, but I think everyone's going to be using a symbol now. Um, we could flip the orientation depending on how the array is rigged. Um, We've also got down here, we've got the dispersion features and we've got the throw distance as well. The throw distance here is just simply how far do you want the graphic, the 2D graphic to go that's going to show you the dispersion. So it's not the throw distance of the speaker. Let's just explain what that is. So um, speaker C, then we have chosen a sub to hang as well. And then it comes to the array builder itself. And these symbol items can then be sorted into the list. We've got angle relative to proceeding down here, sorry, which is like splay. So I can choose a specific speaker and change the splay angle. Or I could angle the entire bumper itself as well, which is great. So it's great that they're now in there because it was always uh, tricky to find those speaker symbols, which is a massive improvement. Um, so then the next thing we'll look at is hoists. So 5621, okay. So the hoist tool has been, uh, there's been some massive performance improvements, the 2021 hoist tool. It's changed quite a lot and it's mostly been simplified. Um, there's still all of the data that you want associated with it is available in here. How you display that data now is mostly through the use of data tags. So it will show things like measurement labels, etc. But any kind of other information, like maybe uh, you might have numbered them in a specific way or have a specific connector you want uh, to use in association with it. So that would be displayed through here. Um, we were having issues with shows with up to 2000 hoists were making, um, we were having performance impacts on the software in 2020. And so in 2021, the new hoist tool has been road tested uh, up to 2000 hoists and it's really, really uh, stable and really fast, which is great. Um, but if you have got an older document, um, so I can find it in here, but hoists, I always forget where it is. There is a tool command now. So if, for example, you have um, an, an older, older file before you um, do anything in the latest version of Vectorworks, be sure to convert your old old hoists I'm just trying to here we go so utilities that's where it was convert old hoists so that's a command you need to be aware of and the other improvements we've got is that prior to 2021 if you were inserting a hoist it wouldn't actually interact with the house point tool so the house rigging point these are basically grav locks or beam clamps so you can see here that I've got one at 23 meters and I've got a piece of truss and pieces of truss at around 17 meters here so it used to be that you used to use the bridle tool to connect those or if you just simply added a hoist onto the truss it would as you can see we're getting that um, red attachment line but what Bre what Brettworks would do and what Braceworks still will do is it will essentially populate a house you can point there for you but let's say for example you want to work within the constraints of the venues points they might have fixed points in the roof that you can't move and so what we've done here as you can see is that when the hoist is around these two objects so it is in the vicinity of the truss boundary and the house rigging point both of those objects now become selected so i can click to insert those and what you'll see now is that it's inserted 
the truss exactly where it should be on that point there. The same rule applies in 3D. So if I'm trying to insert a 3D hoist, you can see here it's picking up the house rigging point and the truss object itself. So I can do that workflow in 3D really quick and easy. However, it will fail at this point here. And see here, it's not giving me the same clue. And the reason that is, is that the truss is outside the house rigging point. So it will need to be within the boundary of that object. So if I were to move that slightly, I forget exactly whereabouts it will happen. But just so you know, if you're trying to do this and you're struggling, that could be why. Okay. You can obviously still use the bridle tool as well. So if we had another house rigging point here, uh, and then we could actually just grab the bridle and do a quick two leg bridle between those points. And um, the other improvements to the hoist tool is you've now got the ability to display exactly how you want the strop or round sling to be choked around the truss object, or if you want to use a specific truss pickup, for example. So I can show you those. So here's some hoists that I've placed in the drawing. And if we just zoom in, that we can see here, we've got the X and the Y axis, but I've also got a really nice 2D graphic of this is exactly, the, this, this figure of eight loop is how I want um, my strop to be choked around this truss and suspended from this shackle. And you can essentially just choose a hoist symbol or you could choose a whole bunch of hoist symbols. And then what you're looking for in this list is select pickup symbol. And there's two different sets of hoist symbols. You've got the hoists themselves and you've got the truss picks and slings. Now, rather than create lots of custom content for this, we've kind of picked the more common um, truss sizes. So you can see here that for most pro light stuff, I'd probably use that 291. Uh, anything bigger, I got 400 by 400. So depending on how you want it to use, you can, in the resource manager, you can duplicate these and edit them. They're just a NURBS curve, so they're very simple to edit and create new ones. And we've also got shackle symbols in there as well, which is great. So once you've um, selected one of these, um, you can then, uh, you'll just need to do an, one tiny other little thing just to make sure you do is make sure you've got show pickup symbol checked, otherwise it won't be there. And you can also control the offset of these as well. And with the right node selected, you can pick up and move these as well. So just be careful, but you need to be looking for the, the blue node and you'll be waiting for your cursor to give you the reshape handle. And when you do that, you can then pick these up and move them. If you're working with hundreds of hoists, you're not gonna wanna do this. So you can actually just type in an offset value for these as well, if you want them to be offset in a particular way. Okay, so uh, once you've done that, then we look to hoists. Um, last thing very quickly to look at on the list is the cable tools. Uh, this is what's the, um, what we decided to introduce with 2021 is to have what we call preview features. Now, preview feature is a feature that um, isn't, that wasn't available for release, but we decided to pre-release the feature because we want the content that is associated with this tool to be driven by you, the customer. So we have, just so you're aware, we have fully functioning completed cable tools pre-existing but these are kind of predominantly 2D tools and they're kind of missing things like dimmer racks and mains distro and things like that. So we wanted to improve this tool set. We thought the best way to do that is to give you a fully working, fully functional pre-release tool, but essentially you can then report back exactly the kind of content that you want us to create for it, which is really exciting. So if I just zoom out a bit, I'm gonna take you through that. Uh, take you to the cable tools. As I mentioned before, the previous cable tools in Vectorworks 2020 would just simply would only work in 2D, uh, and the new ones are fully functioning 3D tools. So here we can see I've got I've got some uh, mains distro here. This is a kind of a, I think it's like a 48-way uh, switchable rack, and I've got some little pagoda units. Here, which are providing the power to most of my LED moving heads, and I've got these cables, etc. And you'll see here that we've got it's fully 3D, so we can actually run. This is a cable path here, which I'll explain up here. So this will go right up to the truss and along the truss. And as you can see, we've got various breakout points. So if I show you that in a top plan view, 
Um, so in terms of where where do you get this tool when it, where and where is this menu? So if you've upgraded from 2020, you'll need to um, go up to window and then go to palettes. And again, we're looking for preview features. If you load the default spotlight workspace, it pops up just so you know. So in here, we got four new tools. So the kind of general workflow is, I would recommend, would be to uh, place your distributed items first of all. So we've got a 400 amp rolling disconnect up here with some power lock. You can fully customize exactly um, what connectors you have on each of these. Uh, so you place your distributor items, um, as you can see, and then right as far away as these breakout cables here. You can also get um, the distributor items and the cable path to do a lot of the manual work for you. I'll explain that in a moment. But essentially, you can say this, um, this will report what dimmer rack it's plugged into simply because you've connected them together. And then any lighting devices, that are plugged into this breakout cable, you can actually get a worksheet generated which tells you that in Way 6, we have a mole foil which is plugged into Dimirac, uh, the first Dimirac, and it's essentially channel 11, uh, universe one. So you can actually report all of that information simply by plugging these up in a schematic. So once you've placed your distribu distributor items, um, the next thing to do would be to run cable paths. So you can see on my screen, I've got all these blue paths. Um, and these are essentially, they're, they're a bit like looms. They're essentially a path that most cables are gonna follow. So you can see here, I've created one that's gone around the front of my stage. And then when it comes to running a cable, as you can see, they snap to the path. So it means I only have to click on the dimmer that I wanna use, click on the path, and then it will come out the other end and I can connect um this fan out on stage right for this mdg hazer which we've got over here so these paths make it much easier um to work in terms of uh where stuff is uh the other thing to mention is that again this is a be a good example that you'd be using automatic plane the cable path tool will work in automatic plane anyway as you can see here we've got a cable path up to this truss and they were just drawn in 3d just simply with a few clicks the other thing you can see on my screen over here is this strange hatched shape, and that is the cable area tool. These, this, these are really exciting. So let's say, for example, uh, I need to add some slack in this area just so that I can change the height of these trusses. If I change my mind, I need to fly the trusses out higher. I'll need to make sure that there's enough slack on the cable. So in order to do that, rather than select the cable styles and put it in there, I can simply draw a shape with this tool and go to the settings and I can say well please add an extra 20% swag uh, on any cable that runs through this shape here and it will automatically add that on and populate that on. The other thing you can do here as well is you can toggle between um, whether you want to use the fewest parts or the best fit for example. So let's say for example um, that you had a soccer run that was um, 70 meters, okay? So in terms of the fewest parts, you might use, for example, um, you might use a, a 50 and, and two tens, for example, or a 50 and a 20, okay? In terms of the best fit, you might use, for example, three 20s and a 10. So you might end up with more soccer parts, but essentially um, you would have a better fit, for example. The fewest parts, you might end up with a little bit left over at the end. Um, those preferences as well can be assigned sort of globally by default for any cable that you run. Um, and so, and that, that can be assigned through this uh, spotlight preview features cable preferences. You can also customize all the parts as well. So I'll just show you that as well. So we go to preview features, gonna manage the cable parts. So the kind of connectors that you use, there's a huge library in here. If anything we're missing, let us know. You can also add your own ones. It's relatively straightforward. Um, and so you can obviously select a cable in here and you can edit its weight, uh, its length that you use more regularly, for example. So a huge amount of work has been done to this and it'd be good to get some feedback from users. It's currently working and functioning, but we'd like to know, we'd like to hear from you if it's missing any distributor items that you use a lot of, etc., or any cable types. Okay, um, so that kind of brings me to the end of uh, the most exciting features for 2021 for Vectorworks. So, um, uh, Alex, have we had any questions? 
Mm, yeah. Okay. Well, great stuff anyway. So thank you for that, Tom. I hope everyone found that interesting and uh, maybe even yeah. learned some new tricks along the way. So yeah, I can see a few have come in. So and as Tom mentioned, it's time to open the floor for questions. So if you've got any, please do feel free to type them in now. Uh, so first one here, uh, I've, I think you've kind of touched on this already, but I've seen speed improvements mentioned for Vectorworks 2021. Does this mean it's reliable with large files now? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, I'd say it's uh, it's more reliable with light with larger files than any previous versions of Vectorworks. Basically, since 2019, um, the 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 top of our priority list for any new Vectorworks version is performance, and that's because you know historically we had users saying the new features are great, but you know there were some instability problems with much much older versions of Vectorworks, and so we were really keen to overcome those first, and that's what we have, especially with things like BGM cache and you know the kind of general file sizes as well uh, are getting much bigger and bigger all the time. We have a really massive landmark file at the moment, which has sort of multiple skyscraper models and large garden areas, all in the single file. But it's also GIS referenced, and so some of the files. Some of the non-entertainment files are actually huge, so the software is uh, is definitely uh, really well adept. I, I think it's interesting. I think uh, it also depends. Uh, what graphics card is really important, so you need to make sure that you're not using an integrated card. You have a dedicated graphics card, and not not every graphics card is compatible. So it's definitely worth having a look at the hardware requirements. And, and I, I'm running. I think I'm running eight gigs of RAM, which is definitely the minimum we'd recommend, I think, for, for the program, definitely. And any other questions? Okay, yeah, we've got some more. Uh, is it possible to interact with the objects in the model, for example, switching the lights on? Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, if you bear with me, I can go to a save view where I've got some turned on. Um, yeah, there's, a, there's a loads of really... Um, really exciting there's this exciting new render mode which i probably should have mentioned actually um and that's essentially uh it, we kind of developed because historically to turn lights on you used to have to right click on the fixture turn on and you just have to make sure that you were in an appropriate render mode um which was uh, a bit a bit of a dark art shall we say but now we've just made it much easier so you can immediately right click on a fixture turn it on and what i'm looking at here just so you know how to when you come to play with this is there's a couple of two new render modes just to be aware of one is realistic spotlight and another one is preview spotlight i think i'm using preview for now so you can see here you can immediately see what that light's going to do in the room you can edit it you can change the color and the haze turn it off um you can focus it which i really like actually because now you can just literally uh tilt the fixture up you can extend the preview of the red um where it's going to end up you can still get it to create focus points if you want to you can hone it etc but yeah it's really good and um, if you want if you need to create visuals as part of your workflow um it does it. So rather than you again having to export stuff into other programs, you can see here, you can create a fairly nice render to give you an idea of, of what your client's going to expect. And this is in two to four minutes, this picture as well. So that's the other thing that we've improved in 2021. We've opened up the rendering to more cores of your processor. So it used to be in much older versions, it was a single core process, where now it's much, much quicker, which is good. And you can do this kind of rendering in the workspace, but again, I, I always try, always prefer to do this. Uh, on a sheet layer when we have vision for this anyway vision is what is what this is for um, but if you need to do this in vectorworks to show a visual you can do as well okay okay yeah very nice uh last one that i can see uh is spotlight suitable for drawing schematics uh yes absolutely uh i don't know if i've got one in this file actually uh, just bear with me a second um We'll just quickly open another project because I've got some schematics in there. Uh, where have you gone? I think it would be good because I could show you something. Uh, so essentially, we have a plugin called ConnectCAD, uh, which has been around for a long time. Um, but it essentially was uh, a version of Vector of Vectorworks, which was kind of repurposed to draw schematics. And last year, we purchased the plugin, so it's now in-house. And here's some of the schematics that you can create with it. So you can detail, this is an audio schematic, front of the house console. Again, um, the difference between the cable tools and ConnectCAD, this is a good question. So uh, the key difference with ConnectCAD 
is that the spreadsheet that gets produced of what gets plugged into where, uh, essentially you can edit the spreadsheet and amazingly ConnectCAD will redraw the schematic for you. So based on your spreadsheet. So you can actually, with this particular project, I could export the worksheet, go on site, plug this up. I might have accidentally got a bit confused and swap some of these ethernet ports around and I can bring the spreadsheet back into the program and say, well, first of all, I can say what's different and it's gonna highlight all the changes. And secondly, I can say, okay, redraw the schematic and it will automatically draw all the circuits for you. So that's the key difference. The, the cable tools in Vectorworks are more to do with mains and power planning, voltage drop off is featured in terms of cable quantities that you need to make the show work. And the schematic reporting is sort of one way in there. So you can get a report of what gets plugged in where, but if you change it in the report, it won't alter the cables at the moment. So ConnectCAD is an incredibly valuable tool and it's sort of, it's an additional plugin that's extra to Spotlight, but um, the speed at which you can draw a schematic is amazing in it. I think it's uh, really, really superb. Absolutely. Um, I just see something, yeah, a quick Sorry, question from Jeffrey in there about the trust pickup, that's fine. Um, yeah, he's using a figure of eight trust pick. Um, it's probably better, especially with, uh, I mean, to be honest with you, the show I've got over here is, is mostly LED moving heads that don't weigh very much. So again, I guess it's a question of weight, it's a question of what country you're in. Interestingly though, you might be thinking about Braceworks and you can actually tell Braceworks what standards you want to use. So it depends, I mean, Vectorworks is used worldwide. Um, so let me just load the Braceworks workspace. I can show you some of the preferences in here. Um, Braceworks will actually do a calculation based on that strop. Um, so you will be able to see it at the moment. And it has passed uh, the calculation in this particular file. Uh, but yeah, so the key thing I wanted to show you in here is preferences, where have you gone? Rigging, Braceworks preferences. So you can see here, you can choose custom preferences, Euro code static, for example or dynamic, if it's a static load or a dynamic load. Um, I think, um, so the, the program itself, Braceworks again is, is an extra bolt on, and essentially all it is, is it is a calculation software. I have got a completed calculation in here, so we can have a look at that. Um, there we go. There we go. So um, you can see it, it did, to be fair, it didn't it take me a while. I had to do, I uh, had to change some of the hoist originally and I had to change some of the bridle parts to eventually get it to uh, uh, pass the calculation. But just to explain what Braceworks is, um, is you don't need Braceworks to draw any of these elements, uh, but you do need Braceworks to run a calculation that you can see here. And when you run that Braceworks calculation, it will color in all this geometry so you can see whether it's passed or failed. And what we can also make out through here is the influence lines. So they are essentially the deflection forces on the truss. And you might not be able to see on your screens, but we've got the length of those deflection lines. And then at the top of each deflection line, it actually displays in kilonewtons the amount of force that's going through that part of the truss. Uh, yeah, so it's definitely a product worth playing with. There's a demo of Braceworks of five days. Oh, great, Jeffrey. If you have Braceworks already and if you've got any questions, then do get in touch with us. Um, and more, more than happy to, to help you with anything. And I, ho I hope it's been really useful for you. Great. Have you any other questions, Alex? None from my side, no. So if you can't see any either, then I guess that's where we wrap up for today. Great um, stuff. Yeah, so thank you everyone for taking the time to join us. And of course, thank you, Tom, for providing that demonstration for us. Again, this has been recorded. So if you would like to watch it again later or maybe share it around with colleagues, we can email that video out to you and we'll have it on our blog soon as well. Uh, I would add, if you haven't yet got Vectorworks, uh, but you'd like to try out these features for yourself, there is a free 30-day trial that you can request. You can do that through our website, which is cadsoftwaredirect.com. Is there anything else you'd like to add, Tom, before we leave it there? Or do you think we've got everything covered? No, I think that's it for now. Thanks for having me, Alex. Perfect. OK, so if you do have any questions, you know, reach out to Tom. He's more than happy to help. And also reach out to us. You can get us on Vectorworks at cadsoftwaredirect.com or give us a call on 01206 804984. So thank you again, Tom. And thank you again, everyone, for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your days. Thanks, Alex. Have a good day. Thank See you. See you guys later.